or hardening Linux security subsystem, uh, which is not an official Microsoft product. It's basically on a research estate uh, for now. Uh, a bit about me. Uh, my background is mostly on uh, in systems and security. Uh, I got my PhD from uh, University of Cambridge System Research Group, where I mostly worked on hardware-assisted compartmentalization and uh, confidential computing, and basically uh, like uh, systems abstractions for uh, better defense in depth mechanisms. Uh, and uh, currently at Microsoft uh, LSG uh, team, I'm uh, working on related uh, security related topics. So uh, let's get us started. Uh, first, I will uh, discuss the uh, uh, scope of the project. Uh, basically, uh, try to uh, explain what is the uh, actual problem we are uh, trying to resolve here. Uh, then I will explain uh, some of the technical background for some of the components we are uh, we rely on, and then uh, I will discuss uh, hardware shields abstractions, the abstractions that we are adding to the kernel with uh, different like hardware or the hypervisor backend, and they will conclude this talk with uh, discussing some of the li current limitations for the current prototype and. Uh, the future work and some of the uh, opportunities for uh, collaborations. As you know, uh, a secure operating system is essential for uh, keeping the entire systems and all of our applications in a uh, secure state. Uh, yet our operating systems are vulnerable to, still vulnerable to many, many uh, different attack vectors. Um, because of uh, their monolithic design, because of their complexity, or uh, because they're written in unsafe languages, and so on. Uh, a recent paper, actually, that is uh, cited here, uh, investigated uh, the existing at attacks uh, on uh, Linux kernel. And their security analysis shows that uh, most of these attacks, about like more than 75% of attacks on the kernel, uh, are related to memory safe, uh, safety issues and also uh, lack of proper privilege separation. Uh, so this is uh, actually the majority of uh, like attacks on the kernel. Uh, but this is a very um, hard problem. It's still an open problem on uh, systems communities uh, to enable proper privilege separations on the monolithic systems or like uh, having the proper OS hardening. Uh, but we had uh, a amazing progress on uh, co control flow integrity techniques and fuzzing techniques, but these are still not enough. Uh, good news is that uh, the recent hardware features for uh, like uh, better, pro more efficient pro uh, privilege separation for uh, basically, better like uh, memory, uh, better targeting memory safety issues like uh, pointer authentications, like tagged memory, uh, introducing like uh, memory protection domains, and uh, these features are helping existing like um, privilege separation techniques to be more efficient. So we can um, like. Um, scale the, the security solutions on, on the kernel. Hypervisor-based security is actually one of those uh, like uh, techniques that is very old. Uh, it's used for like all kinds of security checks on the like uh, operating system because uh, well, hypervisor is running on a higher privilege uh, layer and it can be like really uh, useful for deprivileging the actual operating system for enforcing like uh, uh, address space protections of the kernel for verifying image like integrity for ufi protections for even kernel module protection and all kind of like uh, monitoring attacks uh, from uh, from the kernel side uh, but since like they usually add a lot of uh, they very usually adding a lot of like performance overhead and uh, they're not used that much for like um, fine grain privilege separation on, on the kernel or for more dynamic kind of like uh, security features. Uh, but recently we see that with like uh, better hardware uh, virtualization uh, support, 
we see uh, these kind of techniques are getting more attention. They're, these are getting like more practical. That can can be even used for more dynamic uh, sort of like monitoring or uh, enforcing like security checks. Uh, so um, that's why like we see more progress on uh, like different kind of hypervisor. For example, like Hyper-V, uh, like adding uh, introducing like virtual trust levels uh, and that Windows VBS are, like uh, have support for all kind of like security features like credit card like uh, device guard and all kind of this kind of dynamic also uh, security features through hyper-v uh, we also uh, like uh, had hickey introduced uh, like by uh, mikhail recently uh, and uh, zen for a long time like has this uh, like uh, more kind of dynamic memory protection features, giving you like different view of like uh, the, like uh, address space. So you can have some sort of like uh, uh, better compartmentalization features and then uh, through alt uh, P2M feature that they have. Uh, so uh, hypervisor based security is getting uh, like more practical now because of uh, better hardware that we have. On the other hand, uh, we also see more fine grain, like uh, hardware memory isolation features, memory protection features uh, to uh, our platform. One of these cases are uh, like ARM uh, Morello architecture that is basically extending existing uh, ARM uh, 64 architecture like V8.2 uh, with uh, Cherry hardware capabilities that are uh, basically like adding hardware based metadata to every pointer for uh, assigning uh, like uh, permissions to that uh, protected uh, capabilities to assigning uh, object types to uh, making sure that like uh, every region like bonds uh, checking are like hardware based and these capabilities can be used for uh, like a scalable uh, compartmentalization on the system from uh, bottom up. So uh, they extended uh, the existing uh, like um, architecture arm arch architecture and all of the instructions like for example for load the store like uh, execute all of these like there is also a capability based version like uh, load capability like store capability with some uh, additional like uh, capability on the instruction for example for sealing like making a, a capability Im immutable and uh, all these like uh, uh, extensions are also added in every privileged layer in ARM. So for example, in the secure mode, you can also have uh, compartmentalization. So uh, for example, the secure world that we already had, like uh, for example, trust on architecture, it was a one kind of uh, uh, one way trust uh, between like the secure world and normal world. Now you have like a uh, kind of mutual, dis you can uh, have the mutual distrust between the regions. So, there is a lot of like uh, possibilities for better privilege separations and uh, systems now. So both of these techniques, uh, these uh, like approaches, virtualization based security and uh, these kind of hardware based like finer grain uh, like um, uh, protection uh, features, these are like uh, can complement each other. And there are uh, privilege separation solutions based on both of like these uh, like uh, solutions. And uh, for hardware shield abstraction, we were looking at the state of the art for uh, these two approaches, and uh, we want to like have the uh, abstraction that is providing a minimal uh, like security primitives that can be used like in an extensible and like. A scalable way uh, for hardening Linux kernel security subsystems such as SC Linux, like EMA, like LSMs, and like EVPF. And we were looking at like uh, what are basically these uh, these minimal uh, primitives that uh, can have a different backends. It can the enforcement and the uh, like uh, isolation. It can happen with like virtualization based security. And when it's not efficient anymore, when it's like uh, like it's more useful, and we have like a better hardware, like finer grain hardware protection, like Cherry or like memory uh, like tagging features, like MTE pack, like port authentication, we can then switch to like uh, enforce the actual like isolation through uh, those features. And this way, we can have like a scalable and more kind of practical solution that we can find the right balance between performance and like security. 
So between these uh, like primitives, uh, the main thing in common is like uh, memory isolation, uh, like that is provided that can be provided with both of these approaches. Then there is code and uh, data signing and authentication. And then there is the concept of like uh, a compartment, the domain of like it isolated execution and the abstraction for managing this kind of uh, uh, domains. So hardware shields are going to provide these abstractions, uh, common abstractions, but the enforcement, the isolation uh, can happen, uh, can be provided by either like visualization based security or um, like finer grained like hardware protections like uh, Cherry or MT or uh, PAC. So for our um, early prototype, uh, the first attempts to actually find out like what this abstraction is going to look like, um, we uh, target uh, Cherry ABI for ARM64 based kind of like uh, platform and uh, HECI, uh, like hy hypervisor based kernel in integrated features on KVM for uh, x86 and uh, 64. The reason for these two completely uh, different like designs and like different uh, security architectures as uh, Shields backend is that, uh, well, Cherry on uh, ARM is providing us like with a uh, kind of a, a scalable compartmentalization and privilege separation by design. So we don't have like uh, the uh, like limitations for the number of like um, isolated like uh, regions. We don't have like, for example, the limitations that we have if we pick MTE or uh, PAC pointer authentication on ARM. There are limited, uh, for example, like uh, tags available for coloring uh, and uh, here with uh, Cherry, we have kind of like that uh, environment that uh, we can um, define what would be an ideal kind of uh, state for our privilege separation mechanism. And uh, on the other hand, for like x86, between different kind of like um, hypervisor based securities, I'm like uh, Hyper-V and uh, like Zen and Heki. We pick um, Heki because like um, the difference between like Zen base and Hyper-V base and Heki is that Zen and Hyper-V like um, they define like explicit uh, like trust domain like domain uh, DOM zero based or like a VTL one for example secure kernel in Hyper-V that in those domains you can like uh, basically those are uh, your uh, like secure kernel, you define all of the security specific primitives there and uh, like then you you need to like interact with that kernel. So it, that, uh, it's it's a very explicit like trust uh, like uh, level between the uh, hypervisor and that uh, secure kernel and your uh, like operating system. But Heki since it's a KVM based like enforcement um, it's kind of like uh, it has a different architecture, but it still it provides like uh, the uh, memory protection and like module based like uh, like isolation for the kernel and all of these features. So without like if we uh, have a like if we can find like a better security interface that also works with Heki, it's gonna definitely work with uh, like other kind of like um, virtualization based security. So these two can give us like a good uh, way of like um, view from two different kind of uh, architecture, two different designs for coming up with like what are these like minimal uh, security primitives that we can uh, like implement on shields for uh, like uh, a scalable and extensible like uh, privilege separation uh, that can be used for hardening like Linux security subsystems. So the first uh, like uh, primitive that we uh, need for shield is memory protections, like the uh, abstraction to basically um, uh, define like which parts of the kernel address space should have like uh, which kind of permissions and the enforcement the isolation should be protected by like the hardware or the hypervisor. So this is uh, easy, like because um, both uh, like hypervisor-based security, like Heki and like Morello, like uh, Cherry, uh, they this is the first uh, like primitives that they all support. 
So we just needed to ha uh, provide a wrapper around uh, like their uh, functionality. So we had we added like a wrapper of shield uh, protect address that basically on KVM based uh, like uh, uh, platforms it uses Hecky protect memory like hypercal. And on Morello, it's uh, basically uh, using Cherry instructions for like address set, for bond set, and assigning the permissions. Uh, then that region is protected by uh, Cherry uh, capabilities. So uh, we need this uh, like as the main building block for uh, like uh, the isolation of like um, the shields. And uh, this uh, this actually uh, memory protection. The first thing that is being used, uh, like when you have the uh, memory protection, we assign like uh, a specific like um, uh, hashes, like uh, signatures, uh, like um, and software based kind of capabilities that I uh, dis described later. Uh, and all of these like security sensitive like metadata and things that uh, we need for. Uh, like other primitives for so code signing, data signings, and these are like uh, these are needed to prote to be protected by uh, this uh, memory protection feature. So we first need this building block to uh, store all of the security sensitive like um, uh, metadata that we use for uh, other primitives to be protected uh, like as read only and protected by uh, hardware or the hypervisor. The uh, second um, like primitives that we need for shields are code and data signing and authentication because isolation itself is essential. Uh, for example, for SLinux policies, we want to isolate the policy, but we also need uh, authentication mechanism to uh, measure the integrity and make sure that like uh, this policy uh, is uh, like not modified and provide the proof uh, for that. Uh, so uh, shields uh, like um, implement a very few set up like signing uh, like authentication functionalities for pointers for values and for uh, like um, code regions and uh, all of these uh, like functionalities are also tied to like a, a specific random uh, context tag we call it shield tag uh, per uh, like. Um, Privilege task uh, extract that is basically part of, uh, part of uh, kernel task uh, that is assigned when a, uh, a task is actually using shields. Uh, so this part is actually like may change in future if you have a better way of like um, having a uh, authentication for like uh, users user space tasks that uh, they use shields. Uh, but uh, for now, we having like this uh, uh, tag per privilege task. And uh, internally, these functionalities are also using uh, like kernel C hash, like uh, short input hash. And uh, the values that like measurements and that, all of these are like marked as read only true, like the previous like memory protection, like uh, abstraction that we talked about. So. For KVM, there is like new hypercalls for doing this operation and also marking the result as read-only. And for Morello, we actually have this uh, ceiling capability for making the values in immutable. And we also have uh, signing and authentication like capabilities. Uh, that's only with those capabilities you can uh, do these operations and uh, uh, store basically the values to uh, protected uh, read-only protected parts. Uh, so the third uh, like primitives is that the concept of an isolated uh, execution unit uh, or a compartment or a protection domain and all of the management uh, abstractions for that is, is still going to be a future work. It's not uh, develop, uh, we don't have a uh, prototype for that. Uh, but even with the uh, like memory protection and the authentication and signing uh, like primitives, we can start improving the uh, security of our current like security subsystems like SLinux. For example, for SLinux, we have this new uh, security SLinux shield like uh, uh, option. It's a mode of execution that when you are in that mode. For example, uh, like shields are going to avoid uh, any kind of like mode, uh, SLinux execution mode for uh, from enforcement to pre uh, to permissive or disabling it. It also using like uh, shields uh, 
memory protection and like also authentication to uh, make sure that the policies, uh, like the students' policies are read only with uh, ABC cache as well. And all of like uh, internal, like uh, basically sensitive data structures, like a students' policy map and hash, all of these are also like protected uh, by uh, like um, shields that the backend can be like diff different backends. Uh, so uh, for um, prototyping on like Cherry, that's basically our first uh, like implementation. Uh, we used more of Android uh, kernel for that. We extended like the Android kernel for with uh, these primitives, shield primitives, and uh, because like uh, for on Android we could have uh, Morella based like compiled lib Linux. Um, they basically we, you need to like have it uh, cross compile with a specific cherry like compiler and things like that. And uh, for now, I haven't tested like anything on uh, real arm like um, real arm with FVP like, but it's a very uh, good development environment. It's a little bit slow with, um, uh, but uh, on FVP, for example, like if you go to like Morla project and you can you have there you have a, a simple script with uh, like uh, initializing the FPP with uh, Android software stack and uh, then you can have like a very kind of easy development environment for that so uh, since this is a, a short talk I'm not going to uh, more uh, technical details now just uh, note that there's still a lot of things we need to do. Uh, and this is like an early stage project, especially from like user space API. Uh, we haven't implemented that yet and it needs to be really secure because we don't want to open up new attack vectors uh, for attackers to launch even stronger attacks, like by misusing our privilege operation, by misusing our uh, like interactions with the hypervisor. Uh, so uh, we plan to implement that like um, in uh, on Rust and also like make sure that all of like the in uh, intersections are like uh, logically and also like from implementation perspectives are secure. Uh, also, we need to uh, after we uh, got feedback from the first patches, uh, we need to think about the integration with other Linux security features like for hardening eBPF, for example, or SecCom and things like that. Uh, similarly, there are other hardware security features that uh, can be integrated to shields. For example, PKS, uh, like protection domains on uh, supervisor mode for Intel. That uh, basically Intel actually has a uh, prototype for using that for um, hardening EVPF uh, like verifier. Uh, so integrating things like that or using like uh, MT and PAC uh, on ARM devices when uh, there is no cherry available. These are uh, like uh, important future works uh, that we can uh, like implement better privilege separation uh, tools for uh, Linux kernel. Uh, with that, uh, I'm happy to take any question. Please contact me if you need more details and uh, if you or you have any questions. And um, thank you for your attention. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, fantastic talk. Um, really, um, really like the, the material. Um, I've worked with the Xenod P2M subsystem a lot. I'm practically a maintainer of it, so I'm really happy to see this kind of work making it into the, the Linux kernel. Um, my question is about um, the potential with eBPF. Uh, would it, uh, is it envisioned to be able to run eBPF programs within the kernel in kind of an isolated mode where they are running in execute and uh, with, with only execute and read permissions without being able to actually modify the rest of the kernel, kind of being isolated? Um, yes, uh, actually like um, EVPF is, so I picked first like SE Linux because uh, like it's like, it's, it's not easier, but it's like kind of more like um, straightforward than uh, EVPF and um, for for that actually it's it's actually like uh, our next uh, plan uh, the verifier itself and also like the um, policies but it's a very large code base so uh, the main thing like uh, at first I want to make sure is that like these like uh, small primitives are good enough you know for like 
um, th because we, we also need like a lot of performance like evaluations, like uh, the current state, I, I assume like it's going to like add maybe like up to 10% uh, like overhead. So um, if we come up with like an optimized version that is not going to like even uh, make it EBPF make it uh, make EBPF uh, slower, then uh, definitely. And uh, yeah, we also need a lot of feedback from uh, open source community. I'm going to um, launch uh, like basically uh, make things uh, open source probably in uh, like by end of this month or uh, so, and then we can work on the optimization part. But uh, Actually, the Zen uh, Alp 2 PM is like a really has a really nice design, so I would be really uh, happy to uh, catch up if we can have uh, like integrated these two together. Fantastic! And you answered my second question: is whether you're going to be open sourcing your stuff. I'm looking forward to it. So, um, yeah, thanks again for the talk. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, thank you very much for joining us over Zoom. Thank, thank you. you.